Hey Tommy, do you remember back in 2015 at the Detroit Auto Show, the vehicle that rocked the world? Ooh, was it the Stinger? It was not the Stinger. It was the vehicle behind me. We have waited six years for the Hyundai Santa Cruz to be officially unveiled, and here we are getting hands on with it. So I have a question for you and our viewers, Tommy. Uh, is this a sport adventure vehicle, as Hyundai likes to say, or is it a ute, as the Australians would call it, or is it a compact pickup truck? And I think in this video, we're gonna have to answer that question. So let's start with the design. I'll leave it to you. Well, it's pretty cool. So the front end of the Santa Cruz is borrowed from the Tucson, and that is a really good thing. One of the coolest parts of this design is the grill. So it looks like a standard grill, but over here, these headlights um, are actually daytime running lights. So uh, these little slots illuminate in the daytime and you get this really cool lighting pattern. Let's see if my dad can make that happen here. Ah, there you go. Check that out. How neat is that? And then the main beam is down here on the lower portion of the front end. So big, large, and in charge grill. I like this launch color they've decided to go with. In some angles, it kind of looks like a gray, but in other angles, it's definitely more of like an olive green, which is neat. And it's full of all sorts of clever little hidden Easter eggs. Like this right here is a little baby Santa Cruz in the fender flare. Got these triangular patterns down here. This one's rolling on a set of 20 inch wheels, but an 18 inch wheel will be available if you need a little bit more sidewall for off-roading. Now the C-pillar is very raked forward. So that is one of the most interesting design aspects of the Santa Cruz is these flying buttresses back here and that forward facing C pillar rake with a spoiler. What other pickup truck has a spoiler? Yeah, let's talk about the business end of the Santa Cruz, which of course is the bed, right? So here's the question, you know, is four foot useful enough for a compact pickup truck? So it's four feet. And then if you add the tailgate, uh, you get up to about five feet. So you could put a dirt bike in this with the tailgate open. The other thing that's kind of cool that uh, Hyundai has done and I saw this for the first time in the Cybertruck. It's this, look at this, it's a pan out cover that kind of uh, rolls back into itself, uh, giving you a pretty watertight area to store stuff. Now, you also have, a la the Ridgeline, a little hidden cubby hole, uh, not as deep as the Ridgeline has, uh, to store stuff and lock stuff if, stuff if you want to protect, uh, you know, valuables, maybe a, I don't know, uh, you know, if you're a surfer, you could put your wet stuff in there so it doesn't stink up the interior of the car. But overall, uh, it's a small bed. Yes, Tommy. So some other cool things about the bed is when you close it up, this is a lockable storage area. They're very proud of that. Apparently, the roll mechanism for the tonneau cover is removable. There are six bolts and the whole thing can come out. And uh, other thing you'll notice, tie down points along the side here. I think these are little cubbies in the sides of the bed, which is cool. Some additional more secure tie down points along the edge and the spare tire, unlike the Ridgeline, which lives inside the trunk, is relocated to a more traditional pickup location, which is underneath. So there it is. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little donut. And what do you think of these side steps like the Silverado? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love the side steps. I think those are just wonderful. And I love the fact that the spare tire is actually underneath the vehicle because obviously with the Ridgeline, if you load it up with stuff and then you need to get a flat replaced you won't be able to do it without removing all your stuff so uh, i do love these i think that's a really thoughtful touch uh and you know it's a vehicle that uh, has been designed in california so it's a california designed vehicle i have this image of like you know very good looking guys and gals with surfboards you know driving it down the pacific coast highway so one thing i noticed which is interesting is i don't think that the rear window goes down i think it's fixed in place although there is a defroster um and then I don't think the bulkhead is removable either. So like the Subaru Baja, do you remember? You could like remove the bulkhead and slide things in that were a little bit longer. Yeah, and we got to talk about that, right? I mean, this is not the first, you decide what to call it, that has had a small bed, right? There was a, a, a Subaru Baja, and then if you go the other route, there was also uh, the Avalanche, the Chevy Avalanche. So both of those were kind of, you know, this hybrid of um, SUV and truck. Let's talk about what's under the hood, Tommy. Absolutely, and if you go even further back, you had like the Ranchero, the El Camino, which were based on the sedans. This, unlike those vehicles though, is more of a front wheel drive uh, based platform, and you can get it in front wheel drive, although if you'd like, there's also the H-Track all wheel drive system, which is pretty cool. Now you have a choice of four cylinders, but they're both 2.5 liters. 
Yeah, there's two different power plants, uh, and one produces just under, what, 200 horsepower, the smaller of the two, and then the bigger of the two does, I think, almost 300 horsepower. It's like 275, yeah. yeah. So uh, the bigger engine is mated to a dual-clutch automatic transmission. The smaller engine is, a uh, well, the, the, the less powerful four-cylinder is mated to a traditional eight-speed automatic transmission. Yeah, and I think at this point, you know, you may be wondering, how good is it off-road? We're wondering that as well, but we have found that... Um, when you talk about off-road transmissions, usually the best is an automatic, and then you go to a manual, and then you go to a CVT, and then you go to a dual clutch, because they do tend to overheat. I don't know, this is a new dual clutch, so we'll have to take it off-road, uh, but if it were my money, I'd probably get the traditional 8-speed. You also get an additional benefit when you get the smaller engine, and that is, instead of these 20s, you end up with 18s, which give you, uh, you know, more more bandwidth for like all-terrain tires. I think this thing would look badass in all-terrain tires. And speaking of these colors, Tommy, these kind of muted, you know, pastels are red hot right now. And there's going to be three of these, I think, in the lineup. So I love the color palette. What's the towing capacity? It's three and a half thousand for the smaller engine and five thousand for the bigger engine. That's pretty cool. Now the biggest surprise, you want to hop into the driver's seat? Yeah, let's do it. The biggest surprise of them all is the payload capacity, which is something like 1,700 pounds, a 660 pound bed capacity. But that's huge! Um, and I think a lot of that is due to the unibody construction. So like the Ridgeline has over 1,500 pounds of payload capacity as well. Um, and that's one of the benefits, perhaps, of the unibody. Yeah, so there are some things that I wish I'd love to see, like a volume and a tune button. We've gone kind of to this very big screen with, um, you know, touch controls. Luckily, there is a, a manual volume button right here. You do have a traditional uh, gear selector, which I like. And this top of the end model has, you know, heated and cool seats, heated steering wheel, a lot of creature comforts, Melvin, plus a now? very nice sunroof. Uh, the other question that I'd like to know about is, you know, how does the back seat fit me? Because with the back seat on most uh, small pickups, it tends to be straight up. So let me put this kind of where I would drive, and then let's jump in the back seat and see how, how it does. Now overall, I think this is something like 17 inches shorter than the Tacoma, so it is a, a much more compact vehicle. And for an urbanite who just needs the capability of a little bit extra room in the back, that could be a good thing. But how does that translate to rear seat room? Well, let's start with this. So you've got little cargo compartments underneath. Uh, on the uh, passenger side, you have your jack. And over here, you've got a little bit of storage, which is nice. Uh, and let's see how straight up this is, because this is always the trick, right? Lots of headroom, uh, even with the sunroof. And you know, it's not bad, Tommy. I was really surprised. You could get two adults and maybe two adults and a child in here very comfortably so yeah it's good and now you've got that secured storage area so if you have to go throw your luggage obviously you've got some place to keep it that's dry and hopefully secure so let's talk about how it compares to the other trucks in the class well Hyundai saying that they've invented their own class with this truck because it's so unlike the other mid-sized trucks is also much smaller so its chief competitors right now is nothing is nothing although what's <laughs> well, coming up well so unofficially the Maverick is coming up pickup truck that Ford is building but officially Ford has yet to announce that if you go to TFL we've got some spy footage of it it'll be a very close competitor to this uh, but officially right now there is nothing that directly competes with it at least not here in America yeah and um, I mean it's obviously very different than like a, a Silverado or an F-150 that a lot of our hardcore truck viewers may be uh, used to, but it certainly is an interesting little trucklet. What's the uh, payload capacity on the bed? You 660. Remember? 600. That's just a lot, you know? Uh, it, it, look, in America, um, the Ridgeline has been selling well, but nothing compared to the Tacoma, right? Tacoma in the mid-sized truck segment sells over 200,000 units. Uh, and I think Hyundai, let's walk to the front. I think Hyundai is counting on the fact that this is going to be more of a competitor to the urban shopper who's looking for, you know, maybe a small crossover or maybe a small SUV instead of the truck buyer who is looking, you know, to downsize from a mid-sized truck. You know, time will tell whether that's true. Um, I'm hoping uh, that with more choice will come more competition and lower prices. Uh, and so for me, I love the fact that this vehicle exists. I wish it hadn't taken six years to bring it to market. Uh, and, you know, I think it's just all good for all of us. So I started this walk around by asking a simple question, you know, is it a sports adventure vehicle? Uh, is it a ute or is it a compact truck? What do you think, Tommy? You know, I think it's a trucklet. That's what I'm going with. 
I think it's I think it's really cool. I mean, it's got a little bit of ute in it, but the utes are typically like rear wheel drive. It's got a little bit of pickup truck in it with the 5,000 pound towing capacity and the bed steps. Um, and it's got a little bit of compact in it because it's based on the Tucson. But overall, I understand it may not be everyone's cup of tea. I'm kind of rooting for the little guy. What about pricing? Uh, I don't know pricing. You know pricing? Have they announced it officially yet? No, but what do you think it'll start at? Oh, so we're guessing on pricing. Yeah. Um, I think for the smaller engine, you're probably looking at you know t mid 20s to high 20s, and I suspect this one will go for somewhere in the high 30s. So maybe 25 to, to up to 40 thousand dollars would be my guess. Uh, so once again, not announced. Uh, it's just our first hands-on preview with it. So you know, pricing fuel economy, all that stuff is yet to be announced. I think you're spot on with the price. I'm going to say 26 through 42. That's going to be my guess. Well, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Still a lot we don't know, like ground clearance. And availability. And availability is going to be this summer. It doesn't have a low range transfer case, but... And it doesn't have a great approach angle. No, but Hyundai says it does have a pretty stellar all-wheel drive system, so we're going to have to get it in the dirt and see what that means. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to actually take it to, to hopefully Moab once we get our hands on it. You know, this is the kind of truck that I think I would love to actually purchase for our fleet uh, once it's available. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, run it through year slip test, run it up Tombstone Hill, uh, and just, you know, try to live with it and see what this brings to the table. It's exciting to have a new player uh, that has been missing from the marketplace for a really long time. Well, guys, as always, this has been Tommy and the Big Cheese reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in Hyundai Truck Reviews. How wild is that?